Hey kids, Sarah Cray here with Let's Make Art and we are painting dinosaurs and today we are painting the Stegosaurus. Ooh. Ooh. Oak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I held up Hold the right. Up the right. Rock. There it is. There Ooh. we go. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, in this project we're gonna do it in three steps. So our very first step is we are going to paint the body of the Stegosaurus. Our second step is we are going to paint the plates, which are these spiky things here on top. And the third step, if you want to, is we're gonna do a little bit of texture and scales on our dinosaur. So <clears throat> the colors that I'll mostly be using are yellow and orange and a little bit of pink and red, but you can make this dinosaur whatever color you want. Um, I'm sure they were multicolored and different colors between them. Nobody really knows. And it's your world that you're making, so you can do whatever you want. Now, before we get started, we need to do our oath. Oh wait, I gotta introduce Michael. Michael does our camera work. I talk to him, he gives us facts, jokes, puns. We're also married. And limericks. I give limericks also. Limericks, which is our like what? Poems and song? Song poems? I don't know, but it sounds fun. It does sound fun. Okay, <clears throat> so we gotta do our oath. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> Thank you. And I like to start that way because sometimes we think when we're starting painting that it needs to look a certain way or it has to look exactly like what we're looking at or maybe it needs to look exactly like your friends and that is not how art works. You can make it look however you want it to look and every time that you paint and create, you learn something new. So explore, try things, mix different colors and just have some fun and um, you'll be learning at the same time, which is a win-win. So. Let's get started. Now, before we get started, I just wanna show you how I like to clean my palette. So you can see here that it's messy from a previous painting that I did. And so my yellow is kinda of greenish now. So if I want my yellow to not have any green, which since I'm doing yellow and orange, I don't want green in there, I'm going to just use water right on top here, kinda of rub it, and then take my paper towel and blot. And now my yellow is nice and clean. So if any of your colors get messy or dirty while you're painting, you just put clean water on top and dab it with a paper towel. If you need help from a grown up, you can just ask, and that way your colors are nice and bright again. So, <clears throat> in this first step, I'm gonna be doing a wet on wet technique, which means I will be taking just water and painting just water, and then I'll be dropping in color. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm gonna hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping. I'm gonna go along the top of my dinosaur using just water. Now you don't want so much water that it pools. If you have a puddle on your paper that's too much water, just take your paper towel and kind of soak some of that up so it's not too wet. Now when it's nice and wet like this, I'm gonna grab some orange and some red. And I'm just going to go along the top gray line. And because I already put some water in there, that color is gonna kinda spread out in that water. It kinda has a mind of its own, but I think that's kinda fun because you're gonna get some cool textures by just letting it do its own thing. Stegosaurus fun facts. Okay. They're <clears throat> like 30 feet long-ish. 30 feet long. They're pretty long. Okay, that's very long. They're like seven-ish feet tall at their shoulders. Okay. They weigh a lot, a lot. Why are they so heavy? They're just like They're just little dense muscly, things. dense yeah. things. Their heads, as you can tell, are tiny. Yes. Their brain case is the size of a dog's. What? So they had a similar brain size to a dog but, but they're, they're huge. Yeah. So they're just like large dogs. Uh, are they herbivores or carnivore, carnivores? Herbivores, strictly. Herbivores, strictly, so they only eat plants. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you what an omnivore means because I forgot. Omnivores, both. 
Omnivore is both. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. I, I know it's weird, but omna reminds me of egg, kind of. And uh -huh. Egg is kind of like a vegetable meat to me. <laughs> that's, that's a perfect description of an egg. <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> okay, so um, now what I'm going to do, I did the orange top, and then I'm going to kind of start to use using just water, I don't have any paint on my brush, I'm going to kind of start pulling the color orange down across the body because their bodies are nice and white. So I want to make sure I have all the color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some yellow and I'm going to start putting yellow on my dinosaur. So I'm just kind of filling in. Now the big thing that you want to remember with watercolor is you almost have to think of water as if it was a paint color itself. So water is not there just for mixing or cleaning your brushes. Your water is there to help you push the color around and make your color last longer on your dinosaur. So I'm doing kind of yellow here. And then on the bottom part of my dinosaur, I'm gonna do red. So I kind of have yellow and orange on the top, and then on this bottom part. Stegosaurus is another dinosaur that didn't have a run-in with T-Rex because they lived 40 million years apart from each other. So were they before or after before. the T-Rex? So it goes Stegosaurus, T-Rex, and then Brontosaurus. Brontus and Stega are in similar time periods, 150 to 100 million years ago. Uh-huh. T-Rexes are 60 million years ago. So, oh, I see. Brontosaurus and Stegosaurus lived and went extinct. 40 million years passed and T-Rex popped up. So these guys were friends, kind of, around the same time. They're probably competitors. Well, they were probably friends because they didn't try and eat each other. I mean, if that's the basis of a friend, I have lots of friends. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so, so I did my yellow and orange body, and again, I just want to remind you that you can make this dinosaur whatever color you want, and I'm going to do a red belly, so I'm going to get it just with water, and then I'm going to grab just red, and if you want your reddish to be a little bit more pink, like how we have on the plates at the top, you can just mix a little bit of pink in there. I'm just going to drop that in like that. And then I'm going to skip the leg and do a little bit more red peeking out on that underbelly of the tail. And maybe a little bit on the chest. Now, if you want it to spread a little bit more than when it's spreading, you can just use your paintbrush to move that color. The most prominent, so they name fossils when they find whole dinosaurs. It's very rare to find a whole one. Uh huh. You usually just find like a rib or a skull. Okay. Whole ones they name, and they usually have funny names like USNM4934. Okay. The most prominent Stegosaurus fossil, her name is Sophie the Stegosaurus. Sophie the Stegosaurus. That's so cute. I'm gonna name I'm gonna name my Stegosaurus Sophie in honor of Sophie the Stegosaurus. She's from Red Canyon Ranch, Wyoming. So kids, if you're in Wyoming, you live where they discovered Sophie. Sophie. Sorry. Also, if you live in Wyoming or Utah, you should be a paleontologist because that's where a lot of dinosaurs are from. Really? Yeah. Oh. In one of the Dakotas, probably North Dakota. I don't know, maybe South. I feel like being a paleontologist, paleontologist would be pretty cool. Yeah. So we're, we're looking good. We got to do our legs. So I'm going to, now if you have a lot of paint on your dinosaur, you could possibly just take a damp brush and just try and move the color towards the leg. Now I did that and you can see that there's probably a pretty strong line of where there was color and where I tried to spread it. So if it doesn't spread out quite how you would like, then I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some yellow and drop some yellow in there. 
Now you can do many layers on this dinosaur, so if you try coloring it in the first time and it's just too light and you want your colors to be a little bit more bright, you can just do another layer right on top. And let's throw some orange in there too. Okay, and then the same thing on this back leg. Okay, and I feel like the belly needs to be a little bit more red and pink. It's a little bit too light for me. So I'm gonna do another layer. And I'm gonna kinda go underneath, it's almost like the armpit of this little animal here, right underneath his arm. And then to his knee, or her knee, cause this is Sophie. I'm gonna start painting the plates now, we're in step two. And I'm gonna start off with um, getting some pink. And I'm gonna do, so uh, I'm gonna do the top in pink. And I'm gonna do about two, two plates at a time. And then I wanna get a value change, which just means one part is lighter and one part is darker. So I painted with my pink, and now I rinsed my brush, and using just water, I'm going to spread that pink till it reaches the body of my dinosaur. And you can see that this is a light pink and this is a dark pink. So this is a light value and this is a dark value. And it's super helpful when you're painting to have different values. That's how we make things seem more realistic or dimensional or have more shape to it. <clears throat> it does take a lot of practice to recognize different values in things. Um, but that's all it is, is it's just practice. So if you guys start painting and if drawing and painting is something that you really want to, want to keep doing and really be interested in, you just have to keep doing it and you'll just get better over time. Now, um, again, if you want your plates to be darker, you can always just do another layer and I'm still only going down about halfway because I do want a little bit of a value change. But again, this is your painting and you guys get to decide what this looks like. So maybe you want the, all the plates to be one value and have it all be dark or have it all be light. You can absolutely choose that. You don't have to follow what I'm doing exactly. I like this, your dinosaur color choices on all of them. Oh, thank you. This reminds me, I feel like my daughter Ella just brought a book home from the library that was called like, do you remember? I think it was like, my, The Dinosaur Ate My Homework. I, she read it to her grandma and um, they told me how cute it was. I meant to read it before she had to take it back, but I always like to think of when I'm painting things of different books that I've read that remind me of what I'm painting. Do you have a favorite book on dinosaurs? I'm trying to remember if I read one when I was a little bit younger. No, but I, <coughs> I love that dinosaur movie called We're Back. Oh, yeah. Land Before Time. Land Before Time is another classic. You know, there's like 20 of those. Yeah. I've only seen maybe one or two. I think we're kind of dating ourselves a little bit by talking about this. <coughs> Okay, so I did my plates. Um, again, if you want them to be stronger in color, you can do another layer. And now I'm gonna do my back legs. So these little guys back here. And this one, I'm not gonna do water first and then paint. This one, I'm just gonna pick up the color at the same time. And I want it to be a little bit darker because it's underneath the dinosaur and behind the dinosaur. So to communicate that, we're going to do a darker value which really is just like a darker version of a color. See like that that I put in there, that's too light. You see the difference between this one and this one? Mm -hmm. So I have to do another layer on that one to make it darker. I'm gonna put some yellow on this too so it matches the yellow skin of our dinosaur. Like that. Okay, and now I'm going to do the head. 
And you'll notice here that I do not have a face on my dinosaur. And a lot of that is because I want you guys to decide what your face looks like on your dinosaur. So um, maybe he's smiling, or maybe he has glasses, or maybe he's wearing a hat, or maybe he's serious or tired. There's so many different things that you can make your dinosaur, and I wanted you guys to have the freedom to play with it and make it how you want to. Oh. Okay, you see here I got little little uh, dots here on my paper. That's because my wrist got in my wet watercolor and smeared it. So I can show you how to lighten that up a little bit. So just take clean water, put it over the parts that's smeared, and then take your powel, paper towel and lift up. Now it won't erase it completely, but it will lighten it. And what I would probably do is when I add a background to this, or when you guys add a background to this, I would just paint over those marks. And no one will even be able to know that they're there. So please know that if you make a mistake, if you smear it, if things get messy, it happens to me all the time. It happens to everybody. You just kind of learn how to cover it up. Okay. So now we're going to do our very last step, which is we are going to do some textures. Now, if you don't want to do scaly textures on yours, you do not have to. I'm going to show you how to do it big on here and then you, um, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take like a dark orange and scales are U's that are connected. I guess they could be double U's too, huh? Like so. And then the next set starts in between the two. So they're staggered. And then the next set starts in between. So when I add scales onto my dinosaurs, these are the shapes that I'm doing, in case you can't see. I guess I can move my brontosaurus now. So <clears throat> using that orange, I'm gonna put some scales in. Now I'm only gonna do scales here and there. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I have learned that if you're doing like a texture or a detail like this on top of an animal, if you do it evenly across the entire thing, it tends to flatten or make your dinosaur look really flat. And we want it to feel real. We want it to feel like you can reach out and touch it. And so that's why you're only gonna see it here and there because it still is able to keep its dimension with adding a little bit of detail. And he's gonna have scaly knees. Okay, and then using just water, so I rinsed my brush, and using just water, I'm gonna kind of blend out the edges, like the outside of these scales a little bit. So it kind of transitions into it. Again, this is your painting, and maybe, you, maybe you're just like, you know, I really wanna see what it would look like if I do scales on the entire thing, because I like scales. You can absolutely do it. You don't have to listen to me. Just because I'm doing it on some parts doesn't mean you can't do it everywhere. I'm just telling you why I'm doing it the way I am. And then you can decide if that's the right way for you too. Okay, so now our dinosaur is painted and ready to go. He's just missing a face. So you can use any colors to do faces. If I, I feel like this is a, so her name's Sophie. How is Sophie feeling today? Spicy. Spicy? What expression is mm. spicy? <laughs> Mirror it for the audience. Is that what you did? I don't know if I could do a dinosaur doing that expression. Sh Sophie is feeling totally relaxed. And just having a great day. So a soft smile maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a very calm smile. So an aggressive smile if I was doing like the dinosaur shape. That would be probably a really aggressive happy face. Uh, or That's like a creepy smile. Or just like really, really happy. And if we want maybe a softer smile. Do an eye. And then it's kind of. More like that. See how that one seems more calm than that one? And that's just the angle of the mouth. So you can decide how happy, how sad, how angry. You can, maybe it's eating. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have a face. It doesn't have to. And um, I'm going to turn this so I don't smear what I just painted. It's like a worm, Stegosaurus hybrid, just no face. <laughs> yeah. 
We don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think we know that they have a face. <laughs> All right, touche, touche, touche. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my black and I'm gonna just do a tiny little eye. And then just a nice, thin, gentle smile. Oh, it was a little bit wet, so it smeared. That's okay, that's a good thing to show you guys. My head was still wet from when I painted it, so when I did my line on top of it, the black bled a little bit to make my line thicker than maybe what I would have wanted. So if you want your lines to stay really thin, make sure your head is totally dry before you do any eyes or faces. I'm gonna round out my eyeball a little bit. There we go. Sophie, Sophie's nice and happy. Now, this is your time where you guys really get to play. You can add a background, you can add a ground, you can add trees, you can add the sunshine, you can add other dinosaurs. Maybe it's running with its friends. Just because I left my example white doesn't mean you need to leave your background white. I left it white because I wanted you guys really to have fun with how it looks and I don't want you to feel like it needs to look any certain way. So really take your time, play with it. Um, when you're done, show your friends, show your parents. You can show your aunt and uncle maybe or maybe some grandparents. They would love to see it and we would love to see it. So with the help of a grown up, if they have Instagram, you can tag us in it at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. Uh, if you want to get any of this, these kits or supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. And that's all we got to say. So you guys did great. <laughs>